The X-Man Tornado, a very fitting name given that that's probably where it got lost the first time Speed Cube Shop tried to ship it to me and now that's why this review is coming to you so late. V2M. Ugh, typical cube names. It has a super high quality feel, basically what it feels like to turn a GAN cube. The turning is fast, smooth, incredibly soft, some would even say buttery soft. Just kidding, it's buttery smooth, not buttery soft, but like why would anyone use butter to describe a speed cube? Come on. Also, the color shades are nice, they look really solid and vibrant. But on top of all that, it's really quiet. This is a highly customizable cube, as long as you can read Chinese. No, but this guide is actually pretty good for explaining their customization system, and you can reach a wide variety of different feels on this cube by changing- uh, the wrong cube. Underneath each center cap, there are two sets of settings. On the inside of the circle, there's a number which is the setting for the axis distance. In other words, how far apart you can pull the cube. And you want to think of it as tightness, because the higher the number, so if you go all the way to 5, then you'll have a tighter cube. The outer settings determine the strength of the springs in the cube, which don't affect how much you can pull them apart, but it does affect how easy it is to pull it apart, which affects the flexibility and how fast the cube will feel. You can see which setting you're on, not by which one's closest to the circle, but by which number you see in the gap of the centerpiece, which is also three right now. And again, you want to think of the outer numbers as the tightness of the springs, so if you put it on five, it will be the tightest and the cube will slow down. In the box, you are given this tool and you can change the head of it by popping off the back and switching it, but you're going to use this tool to change everything in here. If you turn this counterclockwise, you can change the inner setting. Now it is on four and it just keeps increasing until you hear the big snap and now it's back to one. And notice that when we turn that setting, this setting here at the gap is still three. Now if you turn clockwise, you can change the spring setting and that moves which number is shown at the gap and the big snap is one. And just remember, you have to do this on all six centers. In the guides that comes with a cube, it shows you all of the possible settings and what they would look like. If you really don't know what to do, just make the numbers the same and try to think about if you want the cube to be looser or tighter. But in general, I found having the numbers to be similar is better, so I would recommend this range if you're trying to be more specific with the setting you want. And you can try settings outside of that, but I found them to feel a little bit weird. And then there are also the magnet settings. You'll have to set your screwdriver to the flathead and then you can just put it here and turn. On each side there are five magnet strengths from the minus sign to the plus sign, of course meaning less to more magnet strength. And remember, stronger magnets is not always better because it can slow down your cube with the extra force you would have to put on it. If you make the core settings looser, I think you should have weaker magnets, and if you make the core settings stronger, you can go for stronger magnets. But personally, I would do all the core settings first before changing the magnet settings. And you'll want all the magnet settings on the cube to be the same, so you'll have to change each side of every edge for a total of 24 edges you have to change, and you cannot do the same thing for the corners, so don't worry about those. If you're wondering which settings I use, in the core I have two on the inside, one on the outside, and for the magnets I'm using setting two. And if you were paying attention to how the settings work, you'll know that these are relatively loose settings. Almost the loosest settings. And if you know me, you know I don't usually do that. I need to talk about this cube's corner cutting. When I try corner cutting, I start with 45 degrees and see if it's relatively easy, and here it's it's okay. Then I go more than that, and this is also okay. Then for reverse corner cutting, I can start by moving this line to about halfway down the piece, and it's good. Then I move a little further, and it has a really large snap. Sometimes that happens. I didn't expect to catch that on camera. When you solve with this cube, after every solve, make sure to push the center caps in because this is something that can happen. So back to corner cutting, it can't really corner cut this very well. And just to compare, other cubes usually can do this just fine. So let's go like really farther. This is farther than I even tried on the other one. And it just does it easy. Let's go even further. Like there, yeah, that's where it stops. But the tornado is often stopping over here. It just kind of depends. Sometimes it can do it and sometimes it can't. And this has actually been the biggest problem for me with this cube. Now, am I corner cutting this much in solves consistently? 
No, but that's not really the point. It still really matters because your corner cuts and solves are not perfect. This is a perfect corner cut. You might be holding the cube in a weird way that causes it not to work. Oh yeah, corner twist, that happens sometimes. And in solves, I noticed that the biggest problem was the reverse corner cuts. And either it didn't corner cut or it would make the corner cut a lot harder. And I had to intentionally avoid these by turning much more accurately than I usually do. And this problem was especially apparent in G perms and U perms. Now, of course, I'll need more corner cutting during something like a G perm because it's just harder to turn accurately during more complicated turns. But even for something like Y perm, I recently switched to the regripless F to start and this has made it especially hard because if this is even slightly misaligned and I'm using a weaker muscle than usual that makes it harder for me to control the layer, then often the corner cut either doesn't go through or it would, will partially go through and then I don't have enough control with a turn like this to be able to correct it quickly. Then for U perms or just for any M move algorithm, this has been a problem because if you slightly misalign a layer and try to do M moves, you will always get a reverse corner cut somewhere and here it would be like that. So let's put it here where the reverse corner cutting often wasn't working and see how difficult that is. Meanwhile, on another cube, we can try even further than that and it works just fine. The reason that I set this cube to be a bit looser was mainly just to make regular corner cutting better. And then I also made the magnets weaker to complement this looser setting. All of those situations I had before with regular corner cutting where the cube would abruptly stop because I got caught, those happen a lot less when the cube is looser and when the magnets are weaker. That way I have a more consistent amount of force I have to put on the cube. However, I could not fix this problem for reverse corner cutting. So if I run into a reverse corner cutting problem such as in a U-perm, then it just kind of ruins the solve. And I think you can see that in my times here. This cube is very good, so very often I get great times, but then every once in a while I'll get just a terrible time. However, yes, I do think this cube is good because like I've said, everything else about it is great. The customization is not too confusing and hits a wide range of settings, which is pretty much all you can ask for. And the cube feels really great to turn. It just has that reverse corner cutting problem, which is such a shame. Now, I still think this cube could be really good for you. It just depends on what finger tricks you use. So if I'm doing the Y perm like this, and it causes me to mess up a lot, if you do it like this, then it's just gonna be easier because all the easier finger tricks don't really get harder. If you run into a reverse corner cut situation, often you can still control it with easier finger tricks. It's just the tougher ones that you can run into the problem with. Or if you're not like me and you actually turn very accurately and rarely use reverse corner cutting, then yeah, this cube is gonna be great for you, but also like every cube will be, just find a fast cube and you'll be good. And also I know a lot of cubers don't care completely about performance and speed and care a lot about how a cube feels. And while that's not what I care about, I respect it. And I think that this cube is really good for that because let's be honest, GAN cubes feel amazing even if they're not the ones that give you the best times. And this cube feels just like a GAN cube and is only $25. Yeah, it's not that cheap, but it's like way cheaper than any GAN cube. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this cube. I'm very curious because there is only this one problem. And I know that unlike me, some of you guys may not even find this to be a problem and may really love this cube. And of course, thank you to speedcubeshop.com for sending this to me. And if you wanna buy it, there will be a link in the description and make sure you use the discount code JPERM. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.